Today I want to talk about something pretty simple, uh, yet I get a lot of questions on it, so I just wanted to kind of explain it in depth a little more, and that is covering your tubes with carbon fiber or Kevlar uh, to do watch part pens or just to make a carbon fiber pen. You can do a lot with this, so let me show you how I cover my tubes, and then we'll kind of talk about some options of what you can do with it once you've covered them. When I do this, it's pretty simple. Uh, I usually try to do a bunch at once so I don't have to get everything out for just one tube. So I kind of try to plan ahead, but you just need a couple of things. You need a couple of clamps, or at least for my method, you need a couple of clamps. And then you need a couple of these types of clamps, and then some scissors to obviously cut the carbon fiber. You'll need some CA. I use medium or thin for this, and I use mercury almost all the time now. I do use a lot of Easy Bond, that's why I carry those in my store. But I have had good luck with stick fast most of the time. Occasionally I'll get a weird result, but most of the time stick fast works good. And uh, even tight bond CA can work. But these are what I use, so that's what I'm showing you. One of the main things you want to do before you, you put the carbon fiber on your tube is paint it. Now, this is a little tricky because if you use the wrong kind of paint, you'll get paint seeping through your carbon fiber when you go to cast it. So I prefer powder coated tubes, powder coated painted tubes, uh, like you see here. You can also use nail polish paint seems to work pretty good. Uh, I've used it a few times, but not a lot. This is definitely my preferred is the powder coated. It gets the best result. Once this stuff is cured, it is hard, so you're not gonna have to worry about any interference. I get the question a lot, where do I get my carbon fiber? And I get it from solarcomposites.com. I don't have any connection to them, but that's I've been using it for a long time and that's where I get it. Uh, this is the half inch, I believe. And what you'll see here is these tubes, you, you can kind of form them to a lot of sizes. So I could, I could put this around a giant emperor tube or pull it really tight almost to a slim line. So this size, the half inch is really versatile. And you can see this is a Junior Gent 2 set that's powder coated, uh, easily fits in there, and then I can pull it tight around the tube. And that's what I've got the clamps for. So what I do is take my powder coated tubes, feed them into the carbon fiber. Now, if you're doing sets like this Junior Gent set, you gotta be careful because one tube is larger than the other and it'll actually slide in there inside. So I like to hold them in place and just make sure I've got them. So once I've done that, I'll cut a little extra. I don't want to waste you know, any, any more than I have to, but you do need some on each side because you need to be able to hold it tight. Because what I do is when I glue these, I clamp them in, and I'm gonna move the camera to show you when I do it here, but I clamp them in and I need this tag on each end to kind of give it snug fit. And what that does is it pulls the carbon fiber around the end of the tube. If you just try to do it without pulling it, I think you'd have a hard time getting the, the carbon fiber to lay perfectly flat because it could you know, bunch up. And then you also wouldn't get the crisp clean edges. And I'll show you how I get crisp clean edges in a minute, but the key is having a little bit of extra and this might be a little too much in the middle. You could probably go with half an inch or so and then pull it that way. So when I go to put it on the clamps for gluing, I'll just simply put one end in and get a good clamp on it. And then I can move this other clamp to where I need to be. And you can either just wrap it around the clamp and then move the clamp out. A lot of times I will twist the carbon fiber once or twice just to make sure I've got a good tight fit. And then what I'll do is pull the clamp out and tighten it down to my bench. So now I've got a pretty good, move that out a little more. I've got a pretty good taut line. It's not, you know, crazy tight, but it is tight enough that the carbon fiber is pulled flat on the tube. And then what I can do, then I'll take my thin CA and just kind of pour it on here. And the thin really spills over nicely, but I want to really saturate the carbon fiber all the way to the bottom. And I'll just use my finger to kind of smooth it out down there. Now here's the key. You want the glue all the way from one end to the other end, even in the middle of the tubes, because you want those hard for when we cut them. But you do not want so much CA that it's, it's hanging off the bottom of the tube and, and pulling. So I'll kind of rub it to make sure that it flattens out. I don't want drips of CA on the bottom of the tubes. So there again, I'll cover it. If you need to, you can always go back and add more, 
but it's better to add more later than too much now and have it dripping. So once I've done that, I can pull my glove off and I'm just gonna wait for this to dry. Now one thing you wanna have is what I don't have here, a dust-free place, but this just was the best for lighting for you guys. So uh, I've shown you in the past these scissors that I use. These are some just large, regular straight scissors, but then these are the ones I use a lot. These are the curved scissors. And I think I mentioned before, I got these at a hobby shop and they were for cutting out RC car bodies, but the curve allows you to cut like corners and curves, of course, but they work really well for this. So what I do when this is dry and hard is I'll cut the ends off, cut the tubes apart, and then just take them one at a time. And the nice thing about these curved scissors is you can kind of go in straight and then turn it and the curve allows you to get right up next to the tube without cutting into the tube because the curve is constantly cutting away and you can just that simply cut around and have a perfect edge. So again, I just insert it, rotate it, get up next to that tube and cut right around. And that is it for cutting out the tube. Now, I said you can do a lot with these tubes once they're carbon fiber. Of course, you could stop right here and cast them in resin and make a really cool carbon fiber pen, which looks awesome. Uh, you can make watch part pens with these by putting watch parts over top of them and then cast them. You can do uh, coins. You can thin and curve coins to put over these. You can do pins. Uh, I've done some police ones where I took a pin badge and thinned it and curved it and put it over and it looks great. Carbon fiber is a great background and it's also great on its own. So this will allow you to do a lot. The process for doing the Kevlar or the Kevlar carbon fiber or the fiberglass tubes is exactly the same. There's not a bit of difference. So I'm not gonna go through each one of those because they're exactly the same. But now you have tubes. I like to let these dry if I can get away with a few days, if I have time, I'm going to let these sit. My minimum is 24 hours if I'm in a hurry. And then I like to put them in the sun or get them some heat to help them gas a little more. But if I can let these sit for several days, a week, or even longer, I will. But if I don't have time, 24 hours is my minimum. Hope this video helped you guys. If you had any questions on the carbon fiber, I'll go ahead and put a link to solar composites in the description below. Uh, in case you're looking for these. But if you have any questions, let me know. Please check out the sponsors of the video in the description for pen parts and whatever. If you have any questions, comment below or shoot me an email. Thanks for watching. Please subscribe and give me a thumbs up. Talk to you later.